Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That's so pretty. Thank you guys. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about classic balayage. Who here has heard of balayage before? All of us, yes. <laughs> so this is something that is not going to go away. It started out definitely as a trend, but it's definitely a classic technique that is here to stay for sure. Um, so with the Rikin classic balayage, there are some different things that we can see on the, if you guys want to look back to the uh, PowerPoint here, you know, we'll keep the lights on because I think we can, can we all see yeah. Yeah. still? Yeah. Okay. So there's three different things we're going to think about with classic balayage, and that is our sectioning, our saturation, and our points of light. So our sectioning is always going to be triangle sized sections, and the width of the triangle is going to determine how far apart our points of light are placed. And our saturation, like we saw earlier with our baby lights technique, is it's only on the surface until we get to the last third, approximately the last third of the hair. Oh, careful over the cord. <laughs> um, so once we are down to the bottom third of the section, that's when we want full saturation all the way through the section. And our points of light is where the sun would hit the hair and we're going to be using a V point of light, so painting on the two sides. Okay, this is going to be our sectioning, so there are going to be diagonal forward lines, and we basically just work up the head from bottom to top using those triangle size sections. Notice the second picture. What do you guys see in the second picture, how those triangles are placed? Staggered. Staggered. The different colors are kind of representing oh, is it, the okay. different rows. It's just standard. Right, so it's a, it's a brick lay. Yes, thank you. So it's a brick lay placement. And we also have our awesome balayage paddle right here. So this is what we're going to be using as our tool to lay the hair onto when we start balayaging. And Redkin also recently came out with a really cool balayage brush. And what do you guys notice about that brush? Curved. 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 Right? So when I'm painting using the top of the crystals there, what might what result might I achieve with this? Versus a stronger point square. And a soft edge. And soft. soft. <coughs> so it's gonna help us to get a lot softer of an edge. Mm -hmm. So I started pre-mixing the freehand lightener for you guys. Um, but I wanted you to see how we mix it. So I already put 30 grams of the powder in the bowl. If we are using our ratio, does anybody remember what the ratio is for one freehand? Who said it? I heard it. One to 1.5. 1 to 1.5, thank you, awesome. So one to 1.5. So I did 30 grams of the freehand so how much of my developer would that be? If it's a one and a half. How much did you put in? 30 grams. So then it 45. would be 45. 45, 45. yes. Okay, your brains are still working. Thank you. <laughs> you wanna be really careful. You don't wanna go over that even by a little bit. A couple grams difference will make a big, a big difference. And then I always like to use a whisk. Riken has these awesome um, plastic whisks because you don't really want to use a metal whisk. And the way that we want to mix it is actually a figure eight. Yeah. So if I mixed it up normally, what might happen is because it's a clay-based lightener, it can kind of fly everywhere because it's very airy. It's a very airy consistency. So let me have you guys all take a look. What are you noticing? It doesn't look like it's blending, right? Like, where's the developer? <laughs> yeah. That's normal. This is normal. Oh my god, I need more. You would think you would need a lot of money. 
Yes. So this one we don't want to eyeball because it's it's not going to be the right consistency and then therefore you're not going to get the right amount of lift. But do resist the urge to put in more developer because this is actually, look at it now. Now, it's coming together. It's kind of like cake batter, right? Like you have your dry ingredients and then you add your wet ingredients and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's my batter. Frosting. Yep. It looks like a frosting or like whipped cream cheese. It's really, really cool. Texture. See now? But it's still, it's super, that's just powder, but it's really thick. That's just powder, sorry. Um, it's, yeah, really, really thick, and that's what we want. Okay. I'm just going to work with the part of the head that I have left to work with, which is my left side here. And I'll just put this over here. And grab my brush and my cotton. So we're going to be using cotton to secure the on the end, just so that before that lighter has time to start creating that hard exterior shell, our cotton is going to protect it from immediately touching the hair below it when it's still moist. So, we're going to look at the side here. So remember it's a diagonal forward. So you could definitely choose to do the entire head, you could do a partial, totally up to you. So I'm going to start, can everybody see? Yeah? I'm going to start with the hair right on the hairline. And I'm going to make, I'm going to use this side of the hairline. Her hairline's kind of like a little bit more vertical, but some people's hairlines go backwards and everyone's a little bit different but I'm going to use the hairline as this side of my V and then just make a point coming to that area right in front of the ear as my V. And so traditionally with these triangles, they are pretty small. If you guys notice, the size of the paddle is not super wide, mm -hmm. right? We do have wider paddles though if you like to create bigger triangles. So like we talked about earlier, what degree of elevation am I holding it at? 45. 45 below the 90. And I'm holding it with pretty good tension. So I like to load up my brush. If you want to, you can make yourself a little reservoir in the back of your hand, which can be a little faster than dipping into the bowl every time. Mm -hmm. And then I like to Start with the little bead. See how I have a bead across the bristles at the edge? And then I want to drop my hands down low enough so I have room to paint. Notice how I'm not in front like this, which actually benefits us for demo purposes, but this is actually how you would stand off to the side. Does anybody know what the word balayage actually means in French? Gradual? I know, right? <laughs> it means to sweep. So, yeah, it doesn't actually mean painting or anything like that. So, that's the motion that we're doing. It's a sweeping motion, and it's a large, a bigger motion of sweeping. Sorry. <laughs> so, we start in the middle. Do you guys, what do you notice about the amount of product I have on there? It's a lot, right? You can't see the hair through. Fully, yes. But we don't, we're still dry underneath. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So think about when we're putting pressure here. You see that bounce? Mm -hmm. That's how you know you have a good amount of tension. If you, It's kind of a trampoline bounce. That's what we want to see. And then we also want to think about the density of the hair. Right? If this is somebody with a lot of thick hair and it's really coarse, we might want to stay here for a little bit longer, pushing this in a little bit deeper. Now, do you see what happened when I pushed it in? 
I can see the surface again because it went in, it went deeper in. It's not coming back on the bristles, it's just going in deeper. So then, now that I can see the strands of hair again, I need to resaturate because I don't want that surface to dry out too quickly. Okay, but if they have like baby fine hair, then maybe we, we wanna just make sure that, see that for this client's hair, that was probably too much pressure because this hair, the ends have lost a lot of friends because I've done a lot of different <laughs> lightning techniques on her. That's a Lori Babel quote, love her. Um, so yeah, we don't want to start seeing it pushing through before we want it to push through. So it would stay a little bit lighter just because this is finer hair. Then once we have that middle done, that's when we want to make our V point of light. And I'm still keeping my brush flat. I'm not turning it perpendicular. So I just, I need to tilt it a little bit when I go over to that side, but I'm still trying to keep it as flat as possible to keep a softer pressure. And I'm creating my V and then I go in with my pinky or a blur brush and push that up and soften those lines. But did you guys notice that when I painted up here, I used just as much set, just as much product as when I'm in the middle? Because what would happen if I am painting nice and solid here, and then I only use a little bit of product? It's not going to be. Sorry, it's just dripping everywhere. It's also going to look more like an ombre than a balayage. Because balayage traditionally actually goes up all the way to the, towards the scalp, close to it, but um, there's more concentration of lightness towards the ends. Mm -hmm. But ombre is it's there's no lightness up at the top, so we don't. That's why I think a lot of people have a problem because they end up with more of an ombre than a balayage. So then, once you can't hold any more hair, grab the paddle. The first time I grabbed my paddle, and see that was a lot of product on my hand, and I used all of it. So you're using a lot of product. I like to give my paddle something for the hair to stick to. Now, when I place the paddle, this is really crucial too. If I go in, once my paddle gets all covered in product, I want to keep it very parallel to the floor. Because if I put my paddle in like this, I'm going to make a line, right? If there's product all over my paddle. So keep in mind where the floor is and stay parallel because see how I have this little gap mm -hmm. at the top. I want to see this gap here, so that's going to create that seamless transition into being fully saturated. It's up to you how high up you want to saturate it. Generally, we say saturate the bottom third, but maybe around the face, we want to go in and saturate the, the whole bottom half. until it can't see any more hair through. You can check the back if you want to. Just make sure you don't have a line. If you do, just use your pinky or your blur brush to soften it out. And then take a cotton, place it on the ends, and then press down with the paddle and let it drop. How is this comparing to previously, previous ways that you guys have seen balayage or done it yourself? I've seen it not like all the way not, they don't go all the way to the top, they go more towards like the, like the middle. Okay, so they didn't go all the way to the top. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you guys see what I just did there? Mm -hmm. What did I do? We were trying to trade. But I also yeah. left one out. Mm -hmm. right. right. So, yeah, if you're, when you do your first triangle, you're going to have one that's left out. Right. Then your next one, so you want to leave those highs and lows, those peaks and valleys, because that's when it, what's going to create the really beautiful dimension. Some of that lightener, see how it kind of got over onto this hair, but you can just use your finger, it's really forgiving. If you want to take it off of the place where you didn't want it, you just kind of swipe it off. So I go at the top of this triangle, diagonal back, and then diagonal forward for my next one and then that becomes my low light in between. Do one more for you guys, and then 
We'll wrap this up because we have a couple more color lines to talk about it and we're getting close to the end. So I'm just going to do one more. Saturate the middle. Get some on the back of your hand if you want. So see how I'm kind of holding it like a pencil too? light, soften up my lines. You want to soften that right away before I go down and saturate. You don't want to wait to soften before you set or till after you saturate because you don't want to give that any time to start creating a harsh line at the top. So now I can't hold the hair anymore. So what do I do? Panel on my board. Place it parallel to the floor. kind of like a blow dryer and a brush technique. I like to go down a few times. So I'm all the way saturated through. Check we're good. And place a cotton. Now a couple things to keep in mind is when we go up to the next row, we don't want to place a triangle directly on top of that triangle, right? Like we said earlier, we do the bricklay technique. So I'm not going to be putting, where baby lights, we always wanted to have a stitch right on every section of every hairline area that we run. But this one, I'm going to leave the hairline out and then go in between. And then you can actually use your comb to draw a line and, and watch your comb go through the hair to see where it comes to the point that's in between the two triangles below. Cool? Mm -hmm. We like that? Yeah. Okay. And then I also yeah. recommend... Yeah, I always let this sit for 50 minutes too because it, it, because it's a slower acting lightener, it's gentler. If you want that full six levels of lift, give it a full five zero fifty 50 minutes. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go back to the, power, the PowerPoint and we're talking...